do you calculate notional operating profit after tax? We take our controllable operating profit and make three types of adjustments. Uh, it is very important to know these uh, three types of adjustments because uh, quite often in your exam you are asked, please explain the adjustments you made. So you will need to say, we did that because we need to convert profit loss items uh, to cash. We need we did that because we need to capitalize marketing. We did that because this is an unusual item and we need to exclude it. So there are three types of adjustments. Why? We want to convert uh, profit and loss to cash. So let's say we exclude such items as increase in bad debt allowance because Profit and loss items are subjective. So PL is subjective. And uh, also, uh, we need cash to pay dividends. So cash is more important. Cash to pay dividend. And uh, also, this minimizes dysfunctional behavior Mm, this is a debatable topic because you can ask for your supplier, for example, for a customer to pay you in December so that you get more cash. So sometimes they say that it minimizes dysfunctional behavior, but it's debatable. Then we need to capitalize marketing, HR, and research and development costs because these are costs that uh, will bring you the benefits in long term. So we will capitalize them and then we will depreciate them or amortize them. And we exclude unusual items such as business reorganizations. Uh, we do that. And that is um, uh, something that is called a limitation or drawback, or, well, this is uh, what is uh, being criticized, right? Because um, uh, we can exclude these uh, unusual items, but they impact it on uh, how much cash we have. So if we do that, then our economic value added actually diverts from that cash. Mm, so it's a debatable topic again. So uh, notion operating profit of the tax depreciation, let's look into the adjustments one by one. We take controllable operating profit. So it's going to be operating, so before your finance cost, operating. And it's going to be controllable. Controllable means that it is uh, the profit that relates to the division. If we calculate uh, for our EVA for division, and well, if it's for the company, then it is for the company. And then we uh, take accounting depreciation and add it back. So uh, what does it mean? Well, depreciation is an expense that reduced our um, profits. And uh, uh, we add it back so that our controllable operating profit will be more or less like earnings before interest tax and depreciation. Then we add back increase in provisions. Why? Because increase in provisions, for example, your bad debt allowance is an expense. If you increase your bad debt allowance, or for example, provision for um, vacations, uh, for induced vacations, you record an expense. And we say, this is a p &L item. No cash uh, inflow or outflow happened for this entry, so we need to take it back. So we add it back. Then we say, advertising, research and development, uh, cost and employee trainings are those expenses that bring us learn to value. So we need to capitalize that. Capitalize that, uh, means that instead of recording it as debit cost, uh, debit expense, credit uh, cash, we will record that as debit asset, credit uh, cash. So instead of uh, having it uh, as the decrease of operating profit, we will transfer that to next year capital employed at uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, well, we will look at the capital employed a little bit later. So we add it back. Then we add back operating lease payments. Mm, this is a tricky part. So look, you know that leasing, hmm, leasing, that if we lease something, we as a less uh, sorry, uh, we, mm, well, actually, if we lease something uh, for us, 
uh, for the person who gets uh, an asset, there's going to be a um, single way of accounting. So we will recognize right of use asset and that we would also recognize a liability, we would appreciate right of use asset and so on. But uh, we need to acknowledge the fact that uh, ICCA uh, is for many, many, many countries. And some countries use their national standards where they do not do that recognition of a right of use asset, but instead they recognize lease payments as expense. Uh, so as uh, they used to do that long ago. Uh, so if they do, then we capitalize that. Uh, well, why? We say that it's a long term um, expense. Uh, in practice, in past exam, I did not see examples of operating these payments being tested, and I don't think that they will because of this tricky thing. And we add back all non cash expenses. So uh, we want to find operating profit, which is more about cash. And then we need to deduct economic depreciation. What does it mean? It means that after uh, we added back accounting depreciation, we did not just uh, add it back and say that uh, we just use our equipment for free. No, we say, let us calculate depreciation in more far away. Uh, let us calculate depreciation and amortization by the points of uh, how we actually use it, right? so economic depreciation. Decrease in provision. So if uh, a provision is decreased, then this means that we have um, uh, debit uh, income in our accounting, but it's non-cash income, so we need to deduct it. Uh, then we need to charge amortization for advertising, research and development and employee trading capitalized. But important thing that when we amortize them, we take that, uh, that's a capitalized asset at the start of the year. So under January 1st, or if it's a normal year, not those that were capitalized uh, above, not those, because this, will bring you benefits later. But there's that were capitalized in previous year. Unless there is some tricky stuff in the scenario, which you will see. Depreciation of operating lease payments. So if you capitalize lease payments, now you are depreciating them based on your expectance of using that asset. And we deduct tax paid, including lost relief on interest. We will make an example a little bit later. Uh, well, what is logic? Well, actually, we need to calculate or we start with operating profit, but uh, we do not need operating profit. We need operating profit after tax, notional operating profit after tax, because our uh, shareholders get money after tax. And therefore, we need to deduct tax. And we take tax that is not in profit and loss, but was actually paid. But we say, look, uh, we had finance cost in PL. And finance cost in PL, so our interest that we paid to the bank, they reduced the amount of tax that we were supposed to pay. But in our formula, we have weighted average cost of capital. And we do remember that in weighted average cost of capital, we have tax share. So when we are going to take that um, um, value, that cost of that, we will multiply that by one minus tax. So this in fact means that if we take full amount of tax paid, then we will duplicate that tax relief on interest. That's why in here, we will need to make an adjustment and uh, we will make an example. So please do not worry. It's uh, absolutely logical that uh, you do not know uh, how, how, how that works. So you just need a little bit of practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Op, op, op. Uh, okay. Uh, now, um, uh, so uh, uh, again, why did we uh, do that? Uh, why did we do all this? Uh, mm, adjustments to our operating profit. This is because we want to calculate actual wealth to shareholders. 
And therefore, these uh, adjustments, they say, okay, shareholders, they need cash, not only profits. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, pro the problem is that profits and cash, they can be uh, really far away uh, in time. So we will get revenues to die and we'll get uh, cash only in a year, for example, if we have a big project. So instead of making our accounting on a cool basis, when you record uh, incomes and expenses, when there is an effect uh, that takes place, we want to approximate it to cash-based accounting. So that's why we take away panel items and uh, record uh, cash items. And as for capitalization and then amortization of advertising, research and development and employee training, we said that these expenses, they should not be expensive. They should not uh, decrease shareholders' value in our current year when we calculate it. Instead, these expenses, they bring us learn to benefits. So we need to capitalize that. So this means that we need to account for intangible assets. Uh, that is never recognized under IS-38, but it is an um, intangible asset because it will bring us benefits later. And then we will amortize that based on expected usage. Well, you will uh, make examples, so please do not worry. Okay. Also, we need to note, uh, as I said, that interest is excluded from notion operating profit after tax because interest costs are taken into account in the capital charge in our weather average cost of capital. How do we calculate capital employed? Uh, well, we need to take capital employed at the start of the year, not average, not at the end of the year, especially not at the end of the year. And we need to write about that. So, uh, for example, if you have a question which says, please uh, comment on whether someone has calculated the economic value added correctly, you will say, Mm, the accountant was right to take capital employed at the start of the year. It is important you are supposed to write about that and look whether capital employed is at the start of the year. And also, we will add to the capital employed accumulated adjustments from previous years' uh, notion operating profit after tax adjustments. And the weighted average cost of capital is calculated as usual. So we take Proportion of uh, equity multiplied by cost of equity plus proportion of debt multiplied by post tax cost of debt. Uh, so um, that's how we calculate EVA. And uh, we do that uh, because the calculation would be in line with shareholders' expectation. And therefore, uh, using EVA as uh, our benchmark, as uh, our uh, KPI, we will make sure that we aim at shareholders for maximization. And uh, uh, EVA encourages expenditure in areas that create benefits for the long term, such as advertising, research and development, or training. And uh, it uh, removes uh, distortion from accounting policies, such as our uh, impact of our provisions. It is consistent with MPV because uh, we include investment, because we include cost of capital. And uh, however, there are many drawbacks. So, well, first of all, it is complicated to calculate and it is hard to understand, especially for non-financial managers. And it is based on historical data. So uh, it is better than return capital employed, but it uh, has limited use if we want to measure to project future performance. Uh, it's an um, uh, absolute measure, so it makes uh, companies of different sizes not comparable, and divisions of different sizes will be not comparable. So that is how we calculate our EVA, and I know that it is uh, overwhelming, but it's not actually a rocket science, so you just need to practice a little bit, and then uh, everything will be okay. Okay.